Hello and welcome to Iron Africa here on France 24. I'm Fraser Jackson. Here are the stories making news across the continent this evening. A former government minister is investigated for corruption in Ghana. The inquiry comes after she reported her housekeeper for stealing a large sum of money. The prosecutors want to know where the money came from. At least 30 people have been killed by a building collapse in Cameroon. Rescue teams are still on the scene as the government investigates the cause of the disaster. And almost two years after Kaya Syed suspended parliament in Tunisia, rights groups are once again shining a spotlight on the country's human rights record. We'll have an interview with Amnesty International. But first, a former minister in Ghana is being investigated after she claimed her housekeeper stole over a million dollars from her home. Cecilia Dapar may have thought she was the one reporting the crime, but prosecutors are now asking her questions as to how a government minister had so much cash lying around. France 24's Justice Baidu tells us more. Two former household staff of the now embattled sanitation minister Cecilia Dapar are currently standing trial, accused of stealing money and property worth over a million dollars from the home of the minister and her husband between July and October of 2022. Many Ghanaians have expressed shock learning that a public officer could be stashing such huge amounts of money in her bedroom at a time when Ghana is going through one of its harshest moment in its economic history. Now the minister would be facing investigations with the country's special prosecutor, but many people want stiffer punishment that could deter many other public officers from doing the same. Adam Senano is a leading anti-corruption campaigner in Ghana. Our expectation is that uh, you could do a lifestyle audit to show that a public officer, what they spent can be aligned with what they were paid. And that's the whole reason of asset declaration and related public officers' code of conduct bills, etc. This one requires a lifestyle audit. Where did this money come from? What did she do? As a public officer who is constantly engaged in running around for government, what else could she be doing to end this much money? Ghana has some laws that forces public officers to declare their assets before assuming office. But like many other laws on the country's books, many have concerns that this law has rarely been made to bite. Rescue teams in Cameroon have spent the weekend pulling bodies out of the rubble after a block of flats collapsed whilst its residents were in their beds. At least 30 people have so far been killed by the incident in the capital Douala. That's where our correspondent Indira Ayuk sent us this update from. survivors and neighbors report that the first story which is home or which was home to about 50 people collapsed on a nearby building resulting in the death of about 30 people. Firefighters who have been at the scene since the early hours of Sunday morning have been able to pull out 30 bodies. There are also reports that about 20 injured survivors are getting treated in hospital. Nearby residents have accused the owner of the structure of putting up the building without getting a permit. The Minister of Health and urban development, Celestine Kechakutes has demanded that investigations be carried out to determine the exact cause of the incident. This is not the first time a building has come down in the crowded city of Douala in 2016 after one of such houses came down, killing at least five people. Government demanded that investigations be carried out. It resulted at about 500 of such poorly constructed multi-story buildings existed in the city of Douala. Throughout Algeria, fires have been burning uncontrollably for days. Fires have sprung up across the region, with at least 34 people now believed to have died in the country. The flames have been fanned by days of scorching weather and strong winds. Over 7,000 firefighters have been mobilized to battle the fires, with backup also coming from the air. 
Now, as Tunisia prepares to mark two years since Kai Syed suspended parliament and assumed executive powers, some NGOs are using the occasion to highlight the country's human rights record. President Syed has found himself accused of a power grab within the North African country, with much political opposition stifled. As the launch point for the majority of migrants trying to cross the Mediterranean to Europe, Tunisia has also become a key focus for Brussels. The EU just days ago pledging over 100 million euros to the crippled economy if it helped stem the flow of migrants. France 24's Camille Nedelec spoke to Hebda Moraev, regional director from Amnesty International. She told us more about the recent release of opposition politicians in Tunisia. Sign that uh, that Shema Isa were were released. Um, that came as a result of a very significant outcry and a lot of mobilization domestically. But first of all, it's important to remind uh, everyone that there are still seven others detained in that same case. And secondly, the charges against them were not dropped. So they could still face um, prosecution under these uh, overly broad, um, unfounded charges that are being brought against them. And the evidence against the entire group is their political acts, its speech, its membership in associations. It, it's almost an attempt to, to, to criminalize, to outlaw uh, opposition politics. And I think that's what's continuing to worry, uh, to worry us so significantly at Amnesty. So while it was, to a certain extent, it was a good, uh, so to a certain extent, of course, it was good news for, for their families uh, to have mm -hmm. those in the released, uh, but because of the many others who remain detained in that case, and also because the charges haven't been dropped, we remain very, very worried uh, about the direction of travel. Um, the authorities have not distanced themselves from that case. They haven't announced uh, an intention to close the investigation. There's been a lot of a, a rhetoric by different public officials at various points. It, it, President Qais Said himself um, casting suspicion on organizations that receive foreign funding, on um, NGOs, on, on civil society. So none of that gives us a sense that there's been a decision to, um, to, to, to change course. Um, and so we are concerned that we're going to continue to see uh, the, these kinds of repressive acts in, in the period to come. And it's not just uh, political opponents that are in the crosshairs of the authorities in recent months, is it? There was also um, increased focus on uh, migrants in Tunisia. The EU is now saying that it will pledge nearly a billion euros for Tunisia to essentially manage the migration flows into Europe. Um, is Tunisia's treatment of migrants at odds with European values? Well, from Amnesty's perspective, Tunisia's treatment of migrants, asylum seekers and refugees is at odds with its obligations under international human rights law. And it's those same international human rights obligations uh, bind European countries in their foreign policies. And what we've seen time and time again in EU relations with North African countries is that the EU has often been complicit in sustaining abusive situations for migrants. I mean, the worst example of this is, of course, Libya, just a neighbor to Tunisia. But the timing of this recent um, accelerated investment in EU Tunisia migration um, agreement discussions, precisely at the same time, right after that xenophobic, uh, racist speech, right after we saw these attacks, we saw arbitrary arrests by Tunisian police. We saw uh, examples where uh, migrants were being detained um, indefinitely, sometimes subjected to involuntary return. The fact that the EU is turning a blind eye to the timing and steaming ahead with these um, these attempts to at all costs keep migrants, refugees and asylum seekers out is, is a deeply worrying uh, signal. So European, uh, European values um, reflected in international obligations, whether under human rights law or refugee law, are, are not being upheld by, uh, by the, these EU countries um, seeking to just keep migrants out of Europe at any cost. Are you optimistic for the future? I am not optimistic for the future because President Qais Saeed has been um, chipping away at uh, different human rights uh, over the last couple of years. He's sought to undermine judicial independence. 
Uh, he sought to silence some of his uh, most vocal critics. Um, he's, he's taken a number of measures and, and passed different legislative acts that have really had a chilling effect um, on, on um, the space for dissent within Tunisia. And that combined with uh, the fact that the EU is so solely focused on uh, migration right now with, and on cooperating with the Tunisian authorities to keep migrants, refugees and asylum seekers out at all cost. Uh, that has meant that uh, a lot of uh, EU countries are actually looking looking the other way when it comes to these serious human rights violations. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a rather bleak picture, but ultimately I think we've seen uh, Tunisian civil society mobilize again and again, and, and some small battles are being won along the way. So the important thing is to protect the space for Tunisian human rights defenders uh, to continue advocating for for their for their different rights that are ultimately set out in the Tunisian constitution and which they fought for so hardly um, over over the last decades. Hey, I have speaking to France 24's Kamine like that a little earlier on. And finally, it was a brave first showing for the first Arab team to play in a Women's World Cup. Morocco took on two-time world champions Germany on Monday, ultimately losing 6-0. Now, despite the dramatic scoreline, the Atlas Lionesses did ask some questions of the German defence, but they'll now lick their wounds ahead of the other two matches of the group. They're set to go against Colombia and South Korea in the next few days. We'll be keeping an eye on that. That's it for now. Stay tuned to France 24. More news coming up next. Want to know? Find out here. With France 24, learn to tell what's true from what's fake on social networks. Identify the false rumors in European news stories. Get reliable information about migration. Truth or fake, every day we bring you information that is verified and put into context. France 24 is news you can rely on every day across all platforms.